How's it going, everybody? It's Stas here, and oh man, we have a lot to talk about in today's video. Like always, we're going to be breaking down the overall markets, taking a look at the S&P, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ, and I also want to share with you all what I personally did in the markets today, plus a bunch of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and that I'm looking to trade right now in this crazy stock market that we're in. And like you all read in the title, I also also want to go over this crazy stimulus package announced earlier today which kind of boosted the markets and kind of what the Fed is willing to do here and I also want to go over gold and kind of how you can trade gold here and have some money in gold without having the physical material because as many of you guys know inventories are dry right now so it's hard to get physical gold I want to talk about how you can trade it and have some exposure to gold as it is rising yet again as of today. So if you guys enjoyed the video, as always, hit that like button for me and consider subscribing if you want to see further content like this. And if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community, join our Discord group chat and our Facebook group linked down below in the description box. And those platforms are free, 100% free of charge. So you have no excuse, guys. Get in there right now now and communicate with everybody the whole team so let's just get right into it starting off with the SPX here the SMP 500 and like I said a minute ago very choppy day in the markets today the S&P down $67 and 52 cents at the close down 2.93 percent and we saw some interesting action here um, towards the end of the day especially since we actually held the 2200 2190 level heading into the close so as of right now this is a double bottom that's a bullish move but Clearly, the downtrend is still intact, so it's really not a bullish move. It's it's kind of the start of a potential breakout, but with everything going on now, guys, with you-know-what, can't mention it or I'll get demonetized, um, I don't see this thing breaking up here. So we're seeing a bit of a double, uh, double bottom, but... I'm not paying too much attention to that because, again, the overall downtrend is down still. It is down still. And the interesting thing is, and you guys know this, if you were paying attention to the futures yesterday, the futures gapped down aggressively, 5%. Then they, they reopened, and in the morning... We were actually, I believe the futures might have been green or we, we pretty much gained back everything because of the Fed. The Fed came in yet again and uh, pretty much said they're willing to do everything anything unlimited stimulus and supply to these small businesses mid-sized businesses bailouts right to keep things afloat to keep things going <clears throat> in this time period that we're in so let's talk about quickly the nasdaq the dow before i do talk about some notes that i have here on my phone regarding um the stimulus here and kind of some numbers that i think are really eye-popping so the nasdaq NDX here ended up somehow going green today up $12.62 up 0.18% and that's another interesting thing we have the NASDAQ up barely but still up in the green we have the S&P down nearly 3% and if we take a look at the Dow right here the Dow got clobbered down about 3% just like the S&P down almost 600 points so we have the double bottom here on the dow jones as well which i'm not paying too much attention to because personally and i've been saying this in these videos i still think there's downside i think low end and i could be wrong but low end on the dow maybe 15k um you know, I can see that happening. And that's still another 3,500 to 4,000 points down uh, below from where we are right now. And for the NASDAQ, low point here, um, you know, I, I don't know. Let's go to the, the, the six-month chart and take a look. You know, actually, we can't use that chart because there's not enough data. We have to go to the three-year chart. So at this point, the NASDAQ is holding this 180 SMA here. 
I think, again, more downside will probably break that. So low end, NASDAQ, maybe 6,000, maybe 5,700 to 6,000. That, that, you know, that really could be an area we go to if we break this major moving average. And for the S&P, might as well do it for the S&P. I can see it going down to, uh, I think it was 1,800, the level that I was looking at, um, Let's take a look here. 1800. Uh, actually, the the next one is going to be 2100. We outlined that in previous videos, and I think if we break that, like I've mentioned before, that is where we'll get to that 1800 to 1900 dollar level, just from a technical basis. And for the S and P, that would put us at. The 180 SMA here on this uh, monthly chart, which is a long-term chart, but still, when we're dealing with overall kind of a macro trend of the of the stock market, I like using the long, long-term charts to get more perspective, and it honestly shows you how drastic this pull-down is, but the scary thing is it also shows you how we could still go further based on, on technicals here, and um, you really can't deny that based off of what we're seeing with our very own eyes on the screen right here. So let's get into some details about this um, stimulus package, and um, guys, you can do a lot more research into this. This is not everything that's going on right now. These are just some key notes that I think are eye-popping. We can go on for hours talking about this, but I really do um, encourage you, that's the word, encourage you to go out and do your own research about this because it's affecting everybody. Let's be honest. It's affecting everybody. So the key thing here, first note, economists now expect the economy to experience a severe recession. Morgan Stanley expects the economy to contract at a 30% annualized rate in the April to June quarter after a 2.4% contraction in the current quarter, which it said would send the unemployment rate to 13% this spring, the highest on records that date. Uh, back to, four, uh, not 1498, 1948. And another thing that I saw, I don't know if this is verified, but I don't know where I saw this, a couple articles or whatever, um, across other social media outlets too, um, which is why I don't know if it's it's verified, uh, but employ unemployment could potentially get to 30%, which is insane. That's just straight up devastation. And um, we'll see if it gets that bad, but figured let you guys know. And again, if you do your own research and come across that number as well, let me know down below in the comment section. Among the actions announced Monday this morning, 90 minutes before the market opened, mind you, perfect timing, right, Fed? The Fed said that the purchases of Treasury and mortgage securities that it approved one week ago are essentially, like I said earlier, unlimited, and that it would buy $375 billion in Treasury securities and $250 billion in uh, mortgage securities this week. By point of comparison, the Fed will buy more government-backed debt this week than it did during a controversial round of asset purchases called QE, quantitative easing, that it undertook between November 10th, excuse me guys, and June 2011 when it bought $600 billion in securities. And <clears throat> QE is what the Fed did essentially to uh, bring us out of the Great Recession in 2008 and uh, kind of normalize the economy, get it stimulated again, which, again, it's, it's what the Fed is doing right now, which, honestly, guys, it's a controversial topic because, yeah, they're, they're, they're stimulating the economy, which is good, but at the end of the day, if you're printing money, this is not free money. You know, it's it's it has to come from somewhere. And down the line, we could really see the dollar being crushed, inflation, hyperinflation, which again, it's it's kind of what the the some of the disadvantages, the main disadvantage of quantitative easing, the Fed continuously building their balance sheet. I think now it's like 4.5 trillion, 5 trillion or whatever now with all of this debt, you know, debt repurchasing, etc. So 
It's getting funky out there, to say the least, guys. And let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on that? Kind of what the Fed is doing at this point. I would love to know. And in general, your thoughts on the market, let me know down below in the comment section. Now, what did I do today, guys? Very simple. What I've been doing. Trading in and out of SPXS. SQQQ and ETFs of that nature that in general, they're volatile when the markets are volatile and they track a specific market index. And today I traded SPXS, which tracks like the ticker symbol hints the S&P 500, which is ticker symbol SPX. And if you guys didn't catch this, um, SPXS, the way I read it is S&P, if I'm breaking down the ticker symbol, that is S&P and the S stands for short, right? So S&P short, SPXS, SPXL, the inverse, what I, you know, I don't know if I think it actually might be called SPX long, but SPXL is S&P long ETF, the long ETF, which goes up when the S&P is going up, right? So that's kind of how I distinguish them in my head. And uh, obviously, when you trade them a lot, you're not going to forget which one is which, but that's just more for the beginners out there or people just not familiar with them to uh, kind of, you know, what's the word? Distinguish between the two. So for me today, I got into SPXS earlier on in the day. I believe it was this rally we saw this morning. Um, I got in at $26.41. I got in... I'm pretty sure it was after this dip right here. We dipped down. S&P was seeing uh, a bit of a rally. I bought into that weakness in SPXS, and you can see it here on the S&P. We gapped down in the morning. We rallied back up, and that is where I started to uh, buy in for the short play via SPXS. 26.40 is when I ended up getting in, and... Um, Ended up getting out, it was at uh, $27 is where I set my limit order. So it was a pretty quick trade, honestly, guys. Um, from $26.40, you can see up to about $27 bucks where I set that limit. It was around a 2 to 2.3% trade, which if you're trading with $10,000, that's roughly a $250 profit. If you're trading with $20,000, that's around a $500 profit. If you guys um, want to hear, you know, in terms of what that would be with a dollar value, right? So for me, that's what I ended up doing today. Nothing crazy. And it's it's kind of what I've been doing. And you guys know that if you've been following this channel. And the beautiful thing about the volatility, the market's dropping. I know it's, it's, it's not a fun time. People are losing money in the long term, um, in their long-term accounts and, and stuff like that, retirement accounts. I'm losing a lot of money, guys, let's be honest. But the awesome thing is, that if you know how to trade volatility, there's a lot more money, in my opinion, to be made when the markets are A, volatile, and B, when they're going down. Because you've noticed, the market goes down a lot faster than it goes up, meaning a lot of these ETFs make massive moves, the, the leveraged ETFs, that is, like SPXS, when the markets go down very quickly, so you can make a nice amount of money. That's if you're educated and that's if you understand how to trade, which again, you know, it's something that takes a long time to master and not saying that I've mastered it, guys. I'm not one of these people that that's a know-it-all. I'm still learning, but to get better at something, obviously it's going to take time. Trading is no different. So let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on the markets in general now? And you're trading again, if you made any moves, that is. Now, let's talk about gold. Let's talk about some of these stocks that I'm watching and uh, how you can trade gold without actually buying physical gold. Because again, these, these dealers, the inventory, it's wiped out. It is wiped out, guys. I've been looking every couple hours um, to, to try and get some gold and... Um, it's, it hasn't been working out for me. I'll be honest for, with you guys. So gold here, slash GC, up $3.20. Nope, that's wrong. That's after hours here. Um, 
during the day, guys, during the day, gold was up 5%. And you guys can see the massive movement made here um, from, let's take a look on this daily chart, 5-day, five 5-minute, five you'll be able to see it. We had a massive move today from 1496 up to where we are right now, which is nearly an 80 to 90 point move in gold, pegging it at, like I said, 5%. So massive uh, move here. And this is because, guys, people are fearing the dollar. All this money printing, this QE. Again, people are scared this dollar is going to get devalued, so they're going into gold. They're going into uh, an asset, uh, you know, a, a store of wealth that has stood the test of time, right? And a way that you can own, own a little bit of gold via an ETF, one that I personally own, and you can trade it this way as well without actually owning physical gold, is GLD, guys. This is an awesome ETF. Again, I own it in my M1 Finance account. Literally 4 to 5% at this point of my portfolio is in gold because of times like this, and it's paying off because as all my other equities are getting slaughtered, GLD is pretty much break even in my portfolio. Heck, I might even be green with my GLD position. I'd have to double check because truth is, I don't remember exactly where I bought it, but it was a couple months ago. That's what I do know for sure. But either way, GLD is a way that you can trade gold. And you can see it for yourselves, right? This is down 7% from its peak being 160 bucks, while the S&P from the peak, not fear-mongering here, I'm just stating facts, the S&P down about 34%. So you can see gold is holding itself um, a lot more than the S&P. And let's have some fun here, guys. Let's see what the S&P has returned. Let's take a look. The past, let's go to this 20-year chart. The S&P, let's go past five years, at this point is pretty much break even. That's that's crazy. You know, the S&P has almost erased all of its gains, capital gains here. This is not including dividends for the S&P. Um, they're gone from 2015. Let's take a look at gold. Gold from 2015, you can see it's actually up a pretty nice amount. Um, you can see from 2015, let's say you bought gold at 1100 maybe 1200 whatever, that you'd be up on your position. So technically, guys, again, dividends not included. This is pretty interesting stuff. If you were to buy gold in 2015, you'd be outpacing the market right now in 2020. In 10 years, will that be the same? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm saying right now, that's the case, which is insane. Gold from 1100 2015 up to where it is now, 15-ish hundred, it's made about a 30% move, which over a five-year span, that's around 6% per year when we're talking about returns, which is pretty interesting, right? So at this point, I'm waiting to buy physical gold. I don't know if I will be able to, but either way, I'm going to be trading GLD. I own some of GLD and some other gold uh, mining stocks, ETFs that I'm watching. Um, GDX is one that I'm watching. This one was up 6% today. This is a Vanek Vectors ETF Trust Gold Miners ETF. Another one is GDX. Um, what was it? GDXJ. That's another, uh, you know, junior gold monitors ETF. This one was up about 10% today. So when it comes to gold, these are the things that I'm watching. Mostly GLD, guys, honestly, because from what I've researched, that has the most correlation to the actual price of gold, um, as opposed to these miners ETFs. They're a bit different, but Either way, that is what I am doing at this point in time. Zoom, ticker symbol ZM. This stock is outperforming everything at this point pretty much, right? Zoom was up 22% today, up $30. And people were asking me, one of my buddies actually was texting me earlier today. He was like, Stas, should I buy Zoom here? Would you buy Zoom? Um, 
First of all, do your own research, of course. Don't buy anything based on my opinion. But for me, at this point, there's no way I'm buying Zoom. I feel like the move, um, you missed it. At, at this point, chasing it, FOMO is kicking in. That's a bad idea. So if anything, I would maybe play a short short play in, in, in the short term here um, before maybe this thing could continue going up as many people out there. I don't know how this affects their revenue, etc. because truth is, I don't know much about Zoom. But one thing I do know, many people out there are using this right now that are working remote. My girlfriend's using Zoom with her job right now working remote. Um, you know, one of my other friends was telling me how People are homeschooling through Zoom. I don't know if that's true, but this is being used, especially in this point in time where people are quarantined out of jobs um, while working from home, you know, school from home. So I'm guessing that's why Zoom is flying up. And for that matter, for that reason, I am watching it. Another stock that's doing very, very fantastic is Netflix, guys. Ticker symbol NFLX. They're up. 8% today. And the crazy thing is, this is beating pretty much, Not actually it's not beating Zoom, but it's beating many stocks out there when it comes to holding its value through this crash. Netflix is literally down. Guys, this is this is nuts. It's, it's beating gold. Netflix is down 5% from its peak about 3-4 weeks ago at 390, which is impeccable. And it's obvious why this is. People are watching Netflix. They're, I'm guessing there's more people signing up. Did we get that information? No, but that's just me speculating. Am I buying the stock because of that? No, that's a stupid reason to buy a stock. But that's, again, just me speculating on what's going behind the psychology with this stock and why people are buying it. Another reason why it went up today is because it got upgraded by Bayard. I don't know how to pronounce that, but some investment firm, uh, B-A-I-R-D, I believe, is what they're called. And you can see it here probably on the live news. Yep, there it is. Bayard upgrades Netflix to outperform. Price target, 415 bucks. So, yeah, I'm watching Netflix here for a potential upwards move. Um, am I holding it overnight? No. Honestly, no, but a day trade in Netflix, I can for sure see that happening in my uh, uh, future here in the stock market. Let me pull up my phone. Another stock that did well today, um, I think it was SPCE, Virgin Galactic. Interesting stuff. Sometimes you'll notice, guys, the markets in general are getting squashed, conglomerates are getting squashed, but... The smaller guys, the smaller stocks, sometimes even the riskier ones, right? They somehow turn green. And SPCE right now, Virgin Galactic, up 15.5%. Interesting. We'll for sure be watching that one. And take a look. I just glanced over at the futures. These futures are ripping up right now. S&P up 2.5%. NASDAQ up $160, 2.3%. Dow Jones up 2.6%. So will this hold tomorrow? I don't know, but I'm assuming it's because President Trump is speaking or he was speaking when I did start filming this video. So I don't know. Maybe he said something. Maybe he hinted towards something that is moving this market up after hours. But like always, guys, at least in this type of volatile market, you can't trust these upswings because they can turn on us in the snap of a finger and the market could be red tomorrow, just like we saw the market red yesterday in the futures and it somehow pulled up green in the morning before dumping again. So just because the futures are green it really doesn't mean anything at this point, right? I, I'm not. Um, I'm. I'm really taking all of these moves with a grain of salt. So some other stocks on my watch list: Facebook down about 1.09 percent. I've been saying I'm looking to buy Facebook um, in the 110s. 120s. Heck, 100s would be ideal, but I don't know if this thing is dropping another 50 bucks. That's just me being honest. I can't really see it unless we get into a deep, deep recession. Markets crash 50, 60%, which, hey, it could happen, but 
I don't know, guys. We'll see if Facebook has another 50-point drop in it. Either way, I'm watching it. Same with Google, ticker symbol G-O-O-G. This was down about 15 bucks today. I'm going to be a buyer of Google in the $800, $900 level. I'll probably buy um, maybe like two, three shares. Nothing crazy. I'm not going in buying half the company, guys. I'm not going in and I'm buying a quarter million dollars worth of Google. But, yeah, maybe like... $4,000 worth of Google, you know, I might pick some up down there. We'll see what ends up happening, right? Tesla today, $434 per share. It was actually green, up $6.76, up 1.58%. So I'm interested in seeing what Tesla does. I'll be a buyer in the 200 level until then. I'm purely watching this stock. Another interesting one, guys, is NEO, which didn't really do anything today, so why talk about it, right? But still, it's worth watching. CCL. This one actually closed literally at break even. It didn't move up or down at all, but with everything going on with the cruise line stocks, I'm looking to see maybe a potential short play in these upcoming days. Like I've been saying, I didn't pull the trigger today with a put option, but I might in the future. These Delta, uh, these airline stocks rather, Delta, I think Warren Buffett has been buying a lot of uh, shares in Delta recently. That's what I've seen at least. And I don't know why this is freezing right now. Please don't tell me the internet got cut off because that would suck because that has happened before. Um, so, okay, there we go. Uh, Square, of course, I'm watching this one, ticker symbol SQ. Let's take a look at DAL before I do end off this video. DAL up 4.07%, and you'll realize, guys, these airline stocks, they might, not saying this is a bottom, but they might bottom out, not saying soon, but if this bailout comes in, maybe Warren Buffett picks up one of these airline stocks if he buys it outright, we may see a bottom in the next couple of weeks, months, maybe. But either way, I am not hopping in, um, you know, due to the risk of bankruptcy, due to the risk of maybe not seeing a bottom anytime soon and then caught bag holding. So for me, I'm just waiting it out. Um, when it comes to these airline stocks. So overall, guys, that's pretty much it for today's video. I pretty much got out everything that I wanted to say. Um, you know, the market's continuing to dump. It's it's volatile. And we're very, we're very sensitive to news at this point, which is why you're seeing this market fluctuate like crazy when the president's speaking, when we're getting these stimulus packages from the Fed. And that's something I, I really see continuing in, in the near future, right? And keep that in mind when you're trading. That's very, very important, right? Don't just stick to one agenda because that is what you think is going to happen. You have to be nimble and just react to what's going on in the moment, regardless if it fits what you think is going to happen. Really just be nimble, guys. Be just just go with the flow. That's kind of how I'm trading. And uh, really, that's really, uh, you know, the advice I have for you, honestly, for those of you guys out there watching these videos. So that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, as always, do me the favor, go down below and hit that like button and also consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see further content like this. And if you want two free stocks from Webull, I have an affiliate link down below in the description box. These two free stocks, guys, they're valued up to $1,400 and all you have to do is put in 100 bucks, and you get those two free stocks. And again, that's linked down below in the description box. So stay safe out there, guys. Have a great rest of your night, great rest of your week, and um, yeah, just, just stay safe, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for the support. As always, peace out.